نمبر 12 ويند ميل ترانزفيرس سكين اوف ذا دورسال ساي ات ذا بروكسيمال سيرت شوز ذا فيموس ويند ميل فورمد باي ذا كونجوينت تندونز اوف سيمي تندونوزس بايسبس فيمورس سياتيك نيرف اند ذا ادكتور ماجنس ماسل سيميلار تو ذا ويند ميل بليدز ميتافوريكالي ذيس اناتوميكال ستراكشرز ار باي فوتال to guaranteeing the energy for lower limb movements. Practically, their recognition might help physicians better locate the sciatic nerve and avoid an otherwise detrimental injury. Number 13, Railway. The biceps femoris is a long muscle, also named as the lateral hamstring muscle in the posterior side. As the name suggests, it has two different heads, one of which extends steeply. Transverse scan of the posterior side distally shows the short head of the biceps femoris muscle appearing like a hopeful railway in between the long head of the biceps femoris and the vastus lateralis muscle. Its recognition might facilitate guided electromyography or interventions. Number 14, Sherry on the Cake. Semimembranosis and semitendinosis are the medial hamstring muscles in the posterior side. Transverse scan, distal third, shows the semitendinosis tendon progressively shifting over the semimembranosis muscle, like the attractive Sherry on the Cake. Again, recognizing these structures is helpful for better and local orientation. Number 15, Sunglasses. The gastrocnemius is the most superficial cuff muscle with two medial and lateral heads separated from the femur. Transverse scan of the proximal half shows these two heads like a pair of fashionable sunglasses. Their recognition would be important for several diagnostic and or interventional procedures for example, tennis leg and spasticity. Number 16, seal with a ball. Tibialis posterior is a deep muscle covered by flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus muscles located on the posterior medial side of the leg. Transverse scan shows the tibialis posterior muscle, posterior tibial artery, and the tibial uh, nerve, which all together picture the sweet seal with a ball. Identifying these structures is important in daily practice to target the right muscle and avoid the nerve or artery during botulinum toxin injections.
Number 17, hammock. The calcaneofibular ligament is one of the three parts of the ankle lateral ligament complex. It extends from the lateral malleolus to the tubercle on the lateral aspect of the calcaneus. Longitudinal oblique scan can be performed to visualize the calcaneofibular ligament, appearing like a comfortable hammock on which the fibularis brevis and longest tendons swing. In case of the ligament can be easily imaged, the outward movement of the tendons from the joint during active ankle dorsiflexion would indirectly confirm the presence of an intact ligament. Number 18. Back man. Plantar intrinsic muscles of the foot are adjacent to the tendons of the extrinsic muscles of the foot. Transverse scan of the plantar surface shows the hungry back man and the nearby flexor digitorum longus and flexor hallucis longus tendons. When taking the two previously mentioned tendons proximally, their crossover, known as the knot of Henry can easily be visualized. Henry's knot identification can be important during the examination of plantar intersection syndrome. Number 19, traffic lights. After the cervical nerve roots exit the neural foramina, they course between the scalene muscles. Transverse scan of the lateral neck from proximal to distal shows the C5, C6, and C7 nerve roots position between the anterior and the middle scalene muscles, similar to the classical traffic lights. Their recognition will be helpful during a broad range of neck interventions. Number 20, grapes. In the suprascapular region, the cervical roots form the trunks, which is then divide into upper and lower divisions. Transverse scan of the lateral neck shows the brachial plexus coursing between the anterior and the middle scalene muscles. Recognition of this juicy bunch of grapes is the mainstay of cervical neck procedures from different perspectives. Number 21, saw teeth. Facet joints are angled approximately 45 degrees at the upper cervical level, and they are more vertical in the lower cervical region. Posterior parasagittal scan of the cervical vertebrae shows the regularly aligned facet joints that appear like the dangerous saw teeth. Their recognition aids for better targeting the joints or the neighboring anatomical structures, for example, medial branches.
Number 22, trident. Longitudinal paramedian scan of the lumbar spine shows the three transverse processes giving sharp shadowings. Recognizing this frightening trident can ensure the interventional physician that the imaging pertain to a far lateral view for a potential use during lumbar root targeting. Number 23, camel humps and horse heads. The typical lumbar vertebra consists of a body, arch, two transverse, and one spinous processes. Longitudinal paramedian scans of the lumbar spine show the facet joints and the laminae that look like camel humps and horse heads respectively. Both structures are targeted during pertinent interventions. Number 24, bat and butterfly. Transverse scan of the lumbar vertebra shows the deep bony lining and the erector spiny muscles, which respectively look like a bat and a butterfly. Bony structures serve as important landmarks during pertinent interventions. Imaging the erector spiny can also be important during exercise therapy when using sono feedback. Number 25, frog eyes. Sacrum, formed by the fusion of sacral vertebrae, is a continuation of the vertebral canal. The fifth sacral lamina don't fuse, resulting in a bony defect that is the sacral hiatus. Lateral walls of the sacral hiatus are formed by the tubercles of the inferior artic articular processes of the fifth sacral vertebrae which is called the sacral cornea. Transverse scan shows the sacral cornea, which appear as overwhelming frog eyes. Recognizing the hyperechoic band between the eyes, which is called the sacrococcygeal ligament, would be important while planning for ultrasound-guided procedures in this region.